Welcome to Accelerate My Practice. So glad you could join me here today. Today, I want to talk about how we have a change in the law coming up uh, through the federal government. The federal government has changed a law that is relative to labor laws and overtime pay. And for the most part, it's not going to affect a lot of people in some ways, and I say that only because it depends on how you're compensated. If you have employees who are in your organization who are paid a salary, you need to pay attention to start pulling out a pen and taking notes, or just plan on rewinding it and watching it afterwards, because it is going to dramatically impact you. That being said, I don't want you to shoot the messenger here. Uh, you know, I realize there could be someone watching this who's thinking, hey, you shouldn't be sharing this in this forum in front of all my employees right now, but it's law. Can't do anything about it. This past May 18th of 2016, it was set in place with an implementation date of December 1st of this year, so only a few months away. Our, our good president is the one that passed the law. I'm not going to get into the political discussion about this being good or bad. It is what it is. It's, there's nothing to it. But before I go on and get into the law, I want to reference some content we teach all the time because it's going to be very appropriate here. And it's the mindset with which you approach things in life. Oftentimes what happens is we think that we, because of some stimulus, there is going to be a, a negative outcome. You know, there's a bad stimulus, bad economy, labor law you don't like, or maybe labor law you do like, and then I'm crabby about it or I'm really happy about it. And the reality is that we have to keep in mind that the decision we make, the step in between, the decision we make about this change gives us the ability to have the outcome we want. The example I use all the time is, uh, I can't think of it, uh, the lottery curse. Sorry, it's one of those days. The lottery curse. Do you know what percentage of people who win the lottery who declare bankruptcy? It's amazing. It's 86% is the last stat I saw. It was, you know, on Wikipedia, so I don't have any idea if it's really accurate, but I'm going to believe it. So you have a great problem. You just won the lottery, $30 million, $200 million. And five years later, you're declaring bankruptcy. And it's because you make boneheaded, stupid decisions in the middle. The same could be said of any challenge in life. You have a challenging circumstance. If you make great decisions, you can get a good outcome. And I want to preface it with this because there's going to be some people who love this law. There's going to be some people who hate it. It all depends on your perspective. It is what it is. If you're someone who loves it because you're excited because you're going to make more money as a result of this, my advice, add more value. Because if you don't, I promise you, somehow, some way, people are going to change things. If you just simply think you're going to make 20% more for doing the exact same thing, you're nuts. Make a better decision. Add more value. If by chance you're the employer and you're concerned about this impacting your overhead and driving it up, there's a whole lot of ways you can handle it. And the best way, I think, is to be transparent with your team. Ha sit down with them, have a conversation, and say, hey, there's this law coming into effect. We, have, we can handle this one of three ways, all of which are completely legal. Depending on how I handle it, you may or may not get a raise. Because I could cut your hours, and I could hire another person, and then you won't make any more. So the reality becomes that we all need to make sure we approach this circumstance, this challenge with a mindset of what's going to be the best for the overall organization. If I'm the, like I said, if I'm the employee who's potentially has the ability to get a raise out of this, I need to be thinking, how can I add even more value so I can capture this additional income? If I add more value, I'm more likely to get the income. If I don't add value, if I do the exact same job, all I'm going to do is get my hours cut and I'm going to make the same amount of money. And if you are the boss, what's the best way for you to handle it? Because you've got things to consider. You've got morale issues you could greatly impact. If all of a sudden you just start changing people's hours greatly because you don't want to pay this additional income that is legally theirs and you're cutting their hours legally, you could create massive morale issues for you and your team. So you really want to put some thought into how you roll this out, everybody. And if you're the boss, I would be very transparent with people and I would say, hey, Here's the concern I've got. You know, I just heard this information right now. I don't know what I think about it, but I'm going to go sit down. I'm going to run some math. You're going to get with your coach if you're a client of ours. If you're not, I'd suggest you consider one and, and run the math to see how this is going to impact you. And if it's going to impact you, I'd come back to your team and go, okay, here's the, here's the dilemma. It's going to jack up our overhead X amount of dollars, X amount of percent. How can we handle this in a fashion that does not just make this higher overhead? 
How can we all come together as a team, rally together as a team, and perform at a higher level? You know, we've shot a lot of shows on how do, how do you perform at a higher level. In fact, maybe we'll throw up a link right here for one of those shows because they're, they're wonderful content about this sort of topic, and it's all how you handle things and the decisions you make in this process. So that being said, let's talk about what some of the impacts of the law are. First off, it goes into effect December 1st, 2016. So you have some time to think about this, which is why I wanted to get this out with a few months of notice. Before this change, what happened was is anybody who was making an annual salary of less than $23,660 qualified for or was uh, available or did qualify for overtime pay if they exceeded 40 hours a week. If you made more than $23,000 and some change, you did not qualify for overtime pay if you were salaried. Lots of people are probably sitting there thinking, man, I thought if you were salaried, you just worked to whatever hours you worked. No, that wasn't the way the law was. If you made less than $23,000 and some change, as I stated, you qualified for overtime pay in the event you exceeded 40 hours a week. Now, as of December 1st, if you earn a salary of less than $47,476 to be exact, you will be entitled for overtime pay if you work more than 40 hours a week. That's a pretty big swing. And that impacts a ton of people. According to this, it impacts 4.2 million workers in the United States. So it potentially impacts all kinds of people. Now, if you're hourly paid, no change, your loss stays the same. If you're commission paid, no change, your loss stays the same, at least per what I've done the research up. I would suggest always you do your own research because I will not be held liable for something if you find out your small little circumstance in your business is not something I'm addressing here and it impacted you differently, you ended up in court. So FYI, my advice always, do your homework. In fact, I'll throw you out the uh, uh, website you can go to. It's DOL, departmentoflabor.gov. And then if you want the forward slashes, departmentoflabor.gov forward slash WHD forward slash overtime forward slash final 2016. Or just search new overtime laws in Google and that stuff will come up. So some other things to contemplate relative to how this will impact you. Um, one is it, uh, you know, it's interesting as I read this, I see um, different numbers. I'm seeing 8 million people are impacted versus the 4.2 I said earlier, so I apologize if you read something different. So employers have a variety of ways that with which they can comply with the law. One, you can raise the salary to of uh, an employee. Say you have an employee who's making $41,000. You can raise their salary to $47,476, and you would be compliant regardless of hours. So one option is, is raise them above the minimum threshold. Option two is that you pay the mandata mandated time and a half for those who do work more than 40 hours. It depends on how much overtime you have, how often you have it. A lot of math needs to go into this. Again, if you need help, contact us, contact your coach, we'll walk you through it. Third option is you simply cut people's hours to make sure they're not working more than 40 hours. You know, one of our team members is a good friend who is, falls right into this category, he used to carry around two cell phones, had a lot of hours where they were on call, working, and all of a sudden they, they removed that responsibility from that person. So it had a, a negative impact on this person relative to their hours. They cut the hours, cut the responsibility. So again, this is where you can come back and if you're the employee, you can add more value and make it worth it. So it's interesting to see how that is. You know, prior to this law going into effect, it, according to this research, said 7% of full-time workers qualified for a uh, time and a half. That is said to increase to 35%. And what's also interesting about this law is they set this thing to be updated every three years based off of wage growth over time. Meaning, and I'm not going to get into this too much because I'm not entirely sure I fully understand this, but they, what they did is they calculated what they believed to be the, the minimum poverty levels were. They came up with a multiple of it to come up with where these numbers come from. So the $47,000 and change is not some random number they came up with. It is a multiple of the poverty line in order to help people get over that threshold. So what they're going to do over time is every three years, they're going to revisit what the cost of living is or the poverty line is, and they're going to adjust this number. So the number will likely go up. I'm not sure if things ever go down. Maybe they will, but highly unlikely. But you could expect three years from now, 2019 as an example, that this number could increase from $47,000 to 
something else. I'm not entirely sure what, because that's out in the future. So some other things that are interesting about this, there is no limit on the act relative to ages of employees. There is no, um, it does not require overtime for people who are working Saturday, Sundays, or holidays, or regular days of rest, if you will. Um, it is only if, if these people are working overtime on those days. So you don't all of a sudden just get overtime because you're working on a Sunday. And then also, it does not need to coincide with the calendar week. So whenever your work week starts from a, a payroll perspective, it could start on Tuesday for all we care. If it runs Tuesday through Monday, it would be those dates. So it's not necessarily coinciding with a calendar week. And then you can't average the hours over two weeks. So if you do two-week payroll, you can't say, hey, you worked 42 hours last week and you worked 37 hours this week, therefore you don't qualify. It is per work week. So you don't have some of these holes, if you will, to be able to get around this. So I, you know, I see some challenges for both sides, quite frankly. You know, I see where there's the opportunity for morale problems. I see where there's the opportunity for increased pay. I see where there's the opportunity for employers to go, it's just another example of the man sticking it to me. And I want to go back to the beginning of this conversation where, remember, you have a stimulus. You have something that takes place. You have an outcome. And in the middle is your opportunity to make decisions. You can take this thing, this opportunity, good or bad from your perspective, and you can find a way to make something positive of it. You can find a way to make this good or bad relative, or regardless of what your perspective is, simply by sitting there thinking, hey, how can I come up with a better solution? And I want to reference some other content that I've done a lot of times. You know, those of you who don't know my life who might be watching me for the first time, you know, I've done a lot of counseling in my life and not because I was necessarily smart or treated well in my younger years. It's just a fact of life. And one of the things I've learned is that oftentimes when I'm triggered, which is a counseling term meaning I'm all spun up and excitable, I tend to think I have this choice or this choice. And whenever you think you only have two choices, you are not thinking clearly. The blood flow is not going to the frontal portion of your brain, which is where all creativity comes from. The blood flow at that point is going to the amygdala, which is your most primal part of your brain, which is responsible for fight, flight, or freeze. And at that point, you aren't thinking well. And I say that because you're going to have some people looking at this going, hey, I only have two choices, man. I got to cut people's hours or I got to pay them more. And neither one of those are good options. And that's not the case. I realize I gave three options that I read. Those are three options relative to the law. But there's so many options because if all of a sudden I put incentive in place for my team of, hey, if we can perform at this level, I will absolutely pay you. In fact, I'll just give you the raise. I don't need to do it because the law, I'll just give you the raise. I'll even give you the raise beyond the minimum threshold. If we can perform at a higher level, can we perform? We've got two and a half months to prove it. And if we can't prove it in the next two and a half months, then I'm going to come up with a different plan. That's just one idea. There are so many different ideas that we can utilize here. So many, it's crazy, limitless ideas. I was talking to a doctor yesterday, and I'm sitting there chatting with her, and I was like, how many opportunities or solutions are there for any one problem? And you know what she said? She said, there's infinite number, which I thought was awesome. Now, the irony of it is the conversation came back around to, well, I don't know, I think I have this choice or this choice. And I'm like, reference the earlier part. Because we fall into those patterns. So I knew in that moment, I can tell when someone says, I have this choice or this choice, I am not dealing with a rational human being. And it's not because they're crazy, it's because they're spun up, the blood flow's not going there, the blood flow's going somewhere else in their brain, and they're not rational. So don't try and be rational with an irrational person. So if you find yourself relative to this going, man, I feel like I'm getting it stuck to me, I have this choice or this choice, I would encourage you to sit back and go, huh. I should be able to come up with at least three options to solve this, maybe four, maybe five. And if I can't come up with three, four, or five, I need to go take a walk, I need to go take a deep breath, I need to do something to help me clear my mind. Find a tool. It's amazing how deep breath can absolutely change you. You take deep breaths, you take three or four of them, it's amazing how your body biochemically will release different hormones that will help you think more clearly. It will change the blood flow patterns in your brain. It will give you the ability to have a different perspective. These are important laws. These are not things we should just ignore. These are just realities we need to deal with. 
And if we don't deal with them, they come back and bite us in the butt in the form of massive penalties. I did not bother to look up the penalties for breaking this law because I don't want to use scare tactics here. Are there penalties in place? I promise you there are. So my encouragement for you, find a way to make something amazing out of this opportunity because there's always an opportunity there. Maybe impress your team by offering them more than the minimums. Maybe impress your team by giving them something additional. Maybe impress your boss by saying, hey, I, see, I realize this is going to cost you extra. I think because of this, I can do this or this or this. You'll notice I didn't say two. This or this or this or this or this to help justify that additional cost for you. I don't want you to have to hire somebody else and go through the headache of training them and maybe them disrupting our team. I'm willing to step up and perform at a higher level for you. Because I believe in your vision, I believe in the vision of this company, I believe in where this company is going, and I am so excited to be a part of it, I can't even wrap my head around it. I think if you do that, everybody's going to win. And celebrate those victories. In fact, I'm going to celebrate one right now. I just took a really boring topic and somehow found a way to make it kind of exciting. I think. Maybe you're sleepy. And if you are, you should wake up right now. If you have questions, reach out to us, acceleratemypractice.com. Shoot us an email at info at acceleratemypractice.com. We would love to talk to you about it if you have questions. I don't care who you are, what industry you're in. Shoot us a question, a call. We'll be more than happy to answer it. We're excited to help you in your business and to be a part of your business and to see your business su succeed and thrive. That's what we're here for. We want to help everybody achieve their dreams. I don't care if you're the boss or if you're the employee. The salary, the hourly, doesn't matter to me. I want to help you accomplish and live out your dreams. So I look forward to seeing you next week here at Accelerate Remote Practice. Until then, have a wonderful day. What if you could have the practice of your dreams? What's holding you back? Imagine a life where you have everything you ever wanted.